It's Sunday night, and you're wasting time. You've got a major report due tomorrow morning. You know it's coming. You know there's going to be consequences if you don't get it done. But you're not getting it done. Instead, you've put on another episode of Stranger Things. Are you really this lazy? Maybe you're asking yourself a question. Why can't I make myself do hard things? Why do I always put it off? Meanwhile, other people just make it look so easy to get hard things done. So what's wrong with me? The answer is nothing. If you're constantly procrastinating, you just can't get around to hitting the gym, doing that load of laundry, or finishing that school assignment, you're dealing with a common problem. But there are solutions, ways to trick your brain into making it easier for you to get the hard things in your life done, and done now. It makes your brain work better. Now, you've probably asked yourself, how is it that these successful people I see seem to have no end of motivation? They can work all day, hit the gym, take care of family, and still find time for clubs and hobbies. Meanwhile, I can barely get off my butt to make lunch. The first thing to understand is that this all has to do with brain chemistry, specifically dopamine. Thank you. To put it really dryly, People who are disciplined and motivated have a good relationship with the dopamine in their head. They use it to their advantage. For other people, it works against them. Let me explain. Dopamine is the chemical associated with desire. It boosts your motivation and attention, and it gets released when your brain believes you've had some kind of success, something that increases your social standing, or maybe your material comfort. You like me. You really like me. Winning a game, successfully asking someone out on a date, landing a job. These are the types of things that give you a big dopamine hit. Think about how it feels when something like that happens. You're probably never more motivated than you are in that moment. I'm the king of the world! <laughs> but in our world today, we've got a problem. There's a whole entertainment economy out there designed to give us dopamine hits in exchange for our money or attention. When you scroll through TikTok, when you watch porn, when you finish a video game level, you are getting dopamine hits. And these days, maybe more than humans were ever meant to get. And here's the thing about dopamine. You build up a tolerance for it. Get enough hits from playing video games or watching hardcore porn, and the hits you get from something like finishing a work assignment on time or getting someone to say yes to a date suddenly become very small. You're not getting that reward. You're not getting that rush from the things in your life that actually matter, the things that could actually improve your life. So the key is to trick your brain into changing its relationship with dopamine. Here are some steps to make that happen. Habit bunching is the practice of bringing bad habits together with good ones. It can be a great way to start doing the things you can't find the motivation to do. Say for instance, you can't get yourself to the gym, so you just end up watching vloggers on YouTube every time you try. Okay, fine. So instead, work out while watching YouTube. Stick your phone on the handlebars of an exercycle. Get a pair of barbells and lift weights while listening to your favorite vloggers ranting. Do this enough and your mind will start associating the fun of YouTube shows with working out. The dopamine hit you get from YouTube will become associated with cycling or weightlifting. After a while, you may find it almost feels wrong to just be watching YouTube while doing nothing else, and you might find yourself drawn to the barbells the way you were drawn to YouTube. Or say for instance, you have to read a long book for school or work. You can't find the discipline. Here, music can help. Find music you really like, but something that isn't distracting. Nothing you want to sing along with, but something you love the sound of. Put that on and start reading. If your brain associates reading this book with that sound you love, you'll find it to be a lot easier to hit the book instead of the phone or TV. Think about your favorite musicians, the one you really respect and admire. When they talk about how they got into music, listen to their words. They might say something like, I've played since I was younger than you. Notice the word play. They could have said, I practice since I was younger than you. But most of the time, that's not what they say. Because practice is a chore. The people who practiced musical instruments growing up, most of them never became Jimi Hendrix or Elton John because they were just going through the motions. But the people who played guitar, the ones who loved it, 
the ones who'd rather do that than something else, they were the ones who became great musicians. Take the same approach, even if you have to fake it at first. Picture yourself enjoying the activity you have to do. This is a lot easier if you've grouped this activity with something you really do enjoy, like music or watching TV. That gets your brain ready for a pleasant dopamine hit, even if you're facing doing something you patently don't like. Stress and anxiety are often the reason why people procrastinate. And one of the biggest reasons people feel stressed out about is a task that's just too big. Getting your flabby body into shape will take weeks and months in the gym. Reading that long book for school will take at least 30 hours. And oh man, cleaning the house after a week of slacking? There's just so many little boring things to do. It's just too much. I can't take it anymore. But of course, it isn't too much. People do things like this all the time. You're not motivated because the dopamine hit from this big task is just so far away. And if that task is boring, it won't be much of a hit anyway. Your brain just isn't into it. Better to just turn on Stranger Things. So here, you want to divide and conquer. Break big tasks into small ones and long periods of work time into little ones. Don't think about the months of working out ahead of you. Think about today's workout and what you want to achieve today. Maybe you want to push yourself to do 30 sets instead of 20. That's it, just that goal, and then move on to the next goal. Don't think about having 30 hours of reading a dry book ahead of you. Say to yourself, I want to get 80 pages done today. How long will that take me? Can I get it done by 9 p.m.? Set simple, short-term goals and shoot for them. Then set the next one and the next one. In essence, you're tricking your brain into giving you a dopamine hit right now instead of at the end of the task. Instead of one dopamine hit when you see your slick new body in the mirror, it's a dopamine hit every time you increase how much you bench. Instead of a dopamine hit at the end of a long book, it's one at the end of every chapter. And once your brain starts associating this activity with dopamine hits, you'll find it much easier to get into the groove next time. You may have been told that if you want to motivate yourself into doing something, you should picture yourself succeeding at that thing. Picture yourself getting into Harvard, or winning the Heisman Trophy, or even just losing 10 pounds. How am I supposed to do that? Well, that's the thing. For a lot of people, this trick doesn't work. In fact, it might do the exact opposite and demotivate you. Picturing yourself 10 pounds lighter might just remind you how much weight you have to lose. Picturing yourself winning the Heisman Trophy might just make you feel like a 90-pound weakling today. So instead of picturing yourself succeeding, visualize your progress. By which I mean, make sure the progress you're making is visible to you, so it can motivate you to make more progress. Let's say you're washing dishes. Tedious, boring, tiring. You've got a sink full of them. If you wash the utensils first, after 10 minutes, it might look like you've made no progress. You're discouraged. You don't want to do more. But what if you start with the biggest pots and pans? After just a few minutes, you can see the pile of dishes has shrunk. Now you're motivated to keep going. Same thing with cleaning your house. Don't picture your house perfectly spotless, or you might despair at what it takes to get there. Clean one corner of a room to perfection, and when it's done, savor the success. Then move on to the next corner. Now, you might be thinking the last thing you need to do is put more pressure on yourself. But placing the right kind of stress on yourself can bring big rewards. I'm not talking about beating yourself up for being a loser or any bad habits like that. I'm talking about seeing deadlines and keeping to them. Once you've broken down your large task into small bits, set yourself a deadline to get those bits done by a certain time. If you get that chunk of work done in time, you'll get a dopamine hit and you'll be more motivated to set another deadline and meet that one. Just keep doing this until the task many little steps become a source of reward. Finally, there is the fact that our brains crave variety. They want a change of pace. Repetitive tasks can wear you out, so part of your strategy to trick your brain into doing hard things should be to give your brain a lot of variety so that it's properly enhanced while you're getting through your hard work. For instance, if you took up running, change up your route. Don't run the same route day after day. 
If you've got a pile of things to do at work, change your morning commute. Go grab breakfast or a coffee somewhere you don't normally do. Or maybe hit the gym before work instead of after. The idea is for your brain to feel as little as possible that you are stuck in a rut. It gets even easier. Most of all, remember that doing hard things is a habit. The more you get yourself to do these things, the easier you'll find it to do them again, especially if you follow the tricks described here. Keep these things in mind, and you'll set off your new life of achievement in no time.